Hi guys. I saw a few items on AliExpress that I decided to purchase and try out so that you guys don't have to do it. And I thought maybe they'll come in handy anyway. So first of all, there is a microscope arm here, which I thought we could try out. I didn't have high hopes for it because I've had those little scissor things before and they tend to not being able to hold very steady. But we'll check it out. There is a power monitor, one of those Hopi things, and a solar pot. I thought that might come in handy for something. And also some an attachment that goes on soldering iron with some hot blades here. That would be useful. I thought sometimes you get PCBs with glued on components or that are covered in goo. You might be able to use that to remove that. And also, of course, for 3D printed parts, sometimes you have to um, make some changes to it. And having a hot blade at a couple of hundred degrees Celsius can be handy for that. So let's check these things out. Okay, so first off, we have this uh, microscope arm over here, and it comes with a little clamp, which I, I'm not using right now. I've got it um, connected to uh, another device because I normally have a I have an arm like that with a um, magnifying glass on it. So I just poked it in there for now, but it's that's not quite as steady as the uh, uh, is using this thing here because it, it does come with a little screw mount over here so you can actually tighten it down this one here so we'll keep that in mind um, that's what right now it's a little bit more wobbly than it would be I, I guess but nevertheless it is a little bit wobbly and obviously it doesn't take the place of one of these M-scope scope arms. All right, so it does work. And I guess this M-scope arm was quite expensive. I think I, I bought it sometime on, on sale, on special, uh, on eBay. And I found out that if you go to eBay and put it in your basket, and don't actually purchase it, you get an email a few days later offering you a, a significant discount, like $20 or something. So I think I paid about $250 for it. But um, if you're on a budget or it's just a hobby and you don't want to spend that much money, I do think this thing would work. Um, but let's try it out. Okay, so. I've tuned in the uh, microscope on a little tiny PCB, but as you can see, it's a little bit um, wobbly if you touch it. It takes a while to settle down. Um, definitely not something that you would want to use on a professional basis. But as I said, it'll probably, it's, you know, it's better than nothing. Enlarge the picture here. came with this box over here and it says Microsoft arm stands on flexible boom scissor and I do think that it is more suitable for a micro microphone and which in fact I think I'll probably end up using it for and another thing is that <clears throat> this ring over here um, had a hole in it, but the threads did not match this this uh, mount over here. This mount is very similar to what you see for, you know, a, a camera mount here. I think it's a quarter inch times 20 uh, threads per inch or something. And that was an entirely different thread that you couldn't thread it in. So I had to actually take a tap and um, uh, Rethread it if you don't have such a thing. That's another reason, perhaps, to um, um, avoid this thing. 
any case, it kind of, you know, it, it sort of works, but it has some uh, some limitations. Now it did come with a smaller ring as well, which is this one here. It actually fits in there, so you can actually put a smaller lens in there for like uh, something that might come with one of those little webcams or something. Okay, so what's next? Okay, so there is this hokey thing. Uh, the reason I got this is because um, I do have some other power monitors, but you have to keep hitting buttons to see all the different values, and this one displays all the values altogether. Um, I recently made one of those things, if you look at one of the other videos, um, so we might compare it, uh, but right now <clears throat> I'm just a look at this thing here. So I've got this plugged into this uh, solar pot plugged into it, and if I turn it on, you can see the um, 1.4 amps and it has 117 and a half volts, 155, 156 watts of power. It seems to be indicating that this thing has, and so on. Now, it also on the picture it came, it, it showed a little CD with drivers on it I guess and stuff but they don't supply that anymore you've got to download the software from the website and I did that and this is what the software looks like uh, I uh, plugged it in it's got a USB micro USB port on the top there and I've got it plugged into my computer that's why it is you know, laying at a funny angle because the cable is too short otherwise and so I turned it on for a little while and I sold the pot and you can see the current uh, went up and then I switched it off and it went down again uh, voltage stayed pretty stable Power factor, of course, same thing when it's turned off. I don't know. So, I think this software is most useful for um, if you've got something you want to record the power that some some something takes over a period of time. I think that would be useful. You can see um, when it turns on and how much power it draws and all that kind of stuff. So that's that. So we'll look at this thing next, but um, let's unplug it. We will unplug this thing as well. This is the cable that's plugged into the computer to make the, its serial connection. All right, so in a couple of things I bought recently came with foreign plugs on there one with an Australian one my little um, solar fume extractor so I tend to have to snip these plugs off this thing came with a, um, a British plug in there and some of these British plugs appear to have fuses in them if I can get that out it's interesting. I I opened the back. It's got a little trap door over here. You can open it up, and there's not much to see there. But one thing you can see is it's got a fuse in here already, and it says it's rated at uh, 20 amps, and because I guess those English plugs have fuses in them. What I decided to do is disable this fuse 
by soldering a piece of wire across it. It's kind of uh, the, the things that some, the Chinese do is kind of interesting sometimes. In any case, I cut that off and I put a, um, a, a US plug on there because that's where I am right now. And they, of course, provided this dinky um, thing with it, uh, an adapter which is only rated for 10 amps, and they tend to fall out of the uh, socket, and of course they're not um, polarized. So it's kind of like um, not a good solution. So that's one thing that I had to do is put a. But other but apart from that, it is work, working pretty good, I think. Um, I think this this guy on that uh, big Clive or something, he's got one of these things that he always uses. So I always wondered where he got it from, and then I saw it on AliExpress, and I thought, oh, get one and try it out. So um, that's that. Okay, so the next thing that we have is I saw this uh, in several places, but the page on AliExpress where I got this from is no longer there, but I've seen them on Temu and other places. What this is, is a um, an adapter for these uh, blades with these little knives, like, like these these kind of things and it, it will take any of those kind of uh, blade exacto knife blades and it came I purchased a whole bunch of uh, blades with it as, as a little kit some little um, some little pointy ones and flat ones of different descriptions this is what I've currently got in there standard ones and here are some more wider flat ones more pointy ones oh these are not pointy ones they're actually uh, very small very small narrow um, ones in any case the idea is that it's like a hot knife and there are some more blades in here, I don't even know what these are who came with it and also um, I got a set of these things as well, they all go into the same kind of soldering iron, these are for putting uh, inserts uh, those little inserts into um, 3D printed materials. These kind of things, those little um, metal inserts that you uh, put in <coughs> 3D printed parts to uh, th little threaded inserts, they will go over the top there and of course it's you make it hot like 200 degrees or something and you can then push them right into the plastic so um, most people that I've seen tend to just use a soldering iron with a tip on there, but these things are more effective because they are they fit exactly on the threaded insert and thought that was kind of kind of nice. But these blades um, sometimes you get PCBs, you know, as I said, with some glue on there or some uh, plastic, and also like. For instance, when I made this case for this uh, thing in one of the videos here, I put this hole in the wrong place. It was up here, so I had to go and uh, actually use a soldering iron. But if I had one of these, I would probably would have made a neater job. Um, good, bit hard to see in the in the in the light, I guess. But um, see if I can adjust the light. Yeah, so I could have, you know, used this thing here to make a, a you know, a, a nice, nicer hole. But what I actually, what I actually ended up using was just this, um, this flat soldering iron blade, and this would be more effective. So 
couple of different uses there and how these things actually uh, fit is they go um, well you unscrew the top over here and then it goes into the little holder over here and of course this is a one of these older fashioned soldering irons that I actually never use anymore I use the uh, modern quick heating ones either the Z12 or, or the Atten ones so I had this laying around and I thought well this will be a good second use for it so I can actually use that and I don't know I've, I've had some PCBs recently with, where I had to remove glue but I can't remember which ones they were and I probably put them back in the devices but here for instance you got one this is all co coated in some sort of gunk and um, I guess you might be able to use those little blades and sort of warm it up and um, re remove it anyway that was the idea I as I said I don't have one to actually try it on but um, I do have a piece of 3D printed plastic here so let's turn it on and see what we can do with it. I'll just plug it in off camera. Okay well I've turned this uh, soldering iron up to as hot as it goes which is 480 degrees C as it says but <clears throat> there is a little bit of a problem here I guess these blades are very thin they're also steel so they don't um, transmit heat as well and so far the hottest that I've been able to get this is like 115, 116 or 118 degrees I think so although that might work for some glues and waxes but it, it barely works on like a 3D printed pipe like I'm trying to slice through here not quite hot enough so I'm not sure I think a shorter blade might work better I guess it kind of works at a pinch I, I, I'm cutting through this um, three D printed part. This is PLA so it's got a fairly low you know two hundred degrees or so melting point. Yeah, I guess it kind of works up to a point. not quite as effective as I thought it might be and I use my flat bladed soldering iron there to just cut through the 3D printed stuff like butter no. Okay, well, I was able to cut through it, but not very as neatly as I would have liked. Still, it, 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 if you're patient, it, it sort of works, but it's not as good as what I had hoped. But anyway, that is what that is all about. And as I said, the thing was rather, it was just not very expensive. So, if nothing else, I ended up with a bunch of um, spare exacto blades. Okay, well, I've got the um, solder pot heated up, and invariably there is some fumes coming off it. So I've got my little fume extractor right behind it. That's what that uh, black thing is. So, 
one of the uses that I can see is obtaining leads of uh, components and so on, but when you're using these kind of group terminals, and these, and even these little ones over here, well, we've seen them. If you just take some wire and poke those in there and tighten it up, quite often the wire slips out because what happens is the, the, um, the strips of wire off here. You get the, if you've got some, some wire, the, it can splay out. And the, the screw touches down on it, it'll it'll spread out and then after a while it'll just it just you know, it doesn't hold very well. Of course you can put little ferrules on there, um, which is a good way to do it. However, one another way that you can deal with that is to actually like I've done to this one, do just a little bit of solder on the tip, which is hard to do with a soldering iron. Now what I found found out is that um, you need to use some uh, flux with it. So I'm using this rosin paste flux over here. And I just dip the tip of the wire in there. And then I can actually dip it into the solder. And there you go. You have a nice little bit of solder on the end. And now when you plug it into one of these screw terminals and screw it down, it will never come out, it will, it will hold because the wires stay together and also um, they, can't, they can't splay out. So that's one thing that this will be good for. Second thing I'm wondering about is if you are I'm wondering about, I haven't tried this kind of wire yet, this is kind of like a some sort of pin coated wire, I wonder if that will Work, work with it, copper does. Yeah, it works just fine as well. So another thing I was thinking of is um, if you had wire that you wanted to connect together, you know, you can uh, you can just you know, normally solder them up. What works? How hard is it to um, put some flux on there? Yeah, it works pretty good. As you can see, they are nicely soldered together. Now, let's turn this off, and I'm going to turn that. Off for now. Of course, on the surface, it will develop a lot of dross. You can take that off, but um, if you leave the dross on, it'll actually protect the metal underneath and um, stop any further corrosion. So I think uh, I don't have to do have to take it off necessarily. So, in any case, what got me onto this thing is like I had I've been trying to find some decent solder from China and um, I had six coils of this um, as I wrote on there, un unleaded junk this is um, unleaded solder this solder over here claimed to have claimed to have 60-40 uh, but um, you can tell that that wasn't true I don't know if there's enough lead in there or if it's unleaded solder that they it just you know you, you you don't get very nice shiny solder joints with it so I thought well I'll get one of these things and I'll use up all the you know uh, half a dozen of these spools of of different types of solder and this is what I did however one thing I didn't count on is that um, this so these uh, coils of solder they have flux in them so when I mount, melted the first coil in there it caused so much smoke that I had to open the windows and air the room out 
that was not a good idea. So the others I actually melted in a bowl outside with a gas, um, uh, what do you call it, a, um, a gas torch. So it burns off the uh, flux. So that worked a lot better. Anyway, so that's what I've done and that's what's in there. Um, but it's surprisingly little uh, solder really, it's on these spools, there's six of them in there, but it's enough. Anyway, uh, I guess I should better buy some. You can buy the, the special um, bars of, of um, tin and so on to um, melt in these things. So that is, um, I think it will be useful. Let me try some of this uh, thick wire over here. You can see how much smoke comes off that. You really need a steam extractor. It'll thin wires quite nicely. All right, so that's all I've got. I thought I would share that I bought some things. I've also bought tons and tons of um, chips, diff different varieties for in interfacing with uh, um, ESP, you know, microcontrollers, ESP32s and so on, Arduinos and then we'll try those out, I'll do some little videos on those um, because you know I bought them at AliExpress and I have to check if those chips actually work anyway so that is it anyway don't forget to subscribe if you guys um, like the videos and I'll see you guys later bye bye